Hi, and welcome to this week's key story. We are reading The Time Specs 3000. Now, I love this title because it has a little hidden word part in there. It's the time specs. If we break that apart, we can see time, of course, means time, but specs is a special kind of word part. It actually means to look. Back in the day, they used to call glasses spectacles instead of glasses. So these time specs are glasses that allow you to kind of look back in time. You can see that in the illustration, how he's looking in the glasses. And then down in the bottom right, you can see that he's looking back in history because people don't wear top hats like that anymore. So of course, because we're using the time specs 3000, this genre is fantasy. Remember, fantasy means it's a fictional story. It is fake. And it has characters, settings, or events that really just could not exist or happen in real life. This story, like many other fantasy stories, also has illustrations. It has drawings, of course, because you can't use photographs with a fake story. In this story, we're also going to be trying to find some idioms. Remember you learned idioms are phrases that have different meanings from the meanings of the words in them. Like if last week or so, a few weeks ago now, we were looking at that storm where it was just raining so much. I might say it was raining cats and dogs, but I don't really mean that it was actually like raining cats and dogs from the sky. I mean that it was raining a lot. So we're gonna look for those words that have a different meaning than what is actually the literal words being said, like raining cats and dogs. So the time specs 3000. September 15th, dear grandpa, I just got back from our class field trip to Washington DC and I have a lot to tell you. Going to Washington helped me decide to run for class president. I owe it all to your invention, the Time Specs 3000. In a nutshell, it helped me get some helpful advice about my problem. I intend to tell you everything when I visit Saturday. But for now, I've pasted my field notes into this email so you can understand how well your invention worked. So we saw an idiom here, so I'm gonna back up. In a nutshell, there are three different clues that have helped me understand this meaning. First of all, he says, I have a lot to tell you. Then he says, in a nutshell, it helped me get some helpful advice about my problem. The next thing that helped me was, I intend to tell you everything when I visit on Saturday. So he's got a lot to tell him. He's gonna tell him everything on Saturday. But right now, in a nutshell, I got some helpful advice. So this, I got some helpful advice tells me that he's giving a shortened version of what actually went on with everything and that a lot that he wants to tell him about on Saturday. So in a nutshell, the literal meaning would mean I was inside of a nut in the shell, but in a nutshell actually means to have a summarized version to sum it up or to say something briefly in a shortened way. Continuing on into field notes. Field notes day one. I use the Time Specs 3000 at Washington Monument. Our guide accompanies us everywhere. And while she's talking, I put on the specs. The design needs tweaking because my friend Ken whispered, nerdy shades, dude. Immediately, I'm seeing the monument in the past. I am watching the ceremony when they laid the cornerstone. Now, a cornerstone you might not know about. A cornerstone is literally the stone in the corner. It's in the foundation of whatever they're building. It's really important to historical buildings. They laid the cornerstone in 1848, and everybody's wearing large hats and funny old-fashioned clothes. When I take off the Time Specs 3000, I realize my class is heading to lunch, so I run after them. Field notes, day two. We're back on the Nash, National Mall, which is nothing like Brookfield's Mall with all of its stores. This mall is outside and has a long reflecting pool. 
My teacher is finding it hard to tolerate some of my classmates' immature behavior, which includes running around throwing pebbles in the reflecting pool. I'm getting kind of weary of all the noise, and I'd rather learn about history on my own. So I put on the Time Specs 3000 and check out the Lincoln Memorial. I see how dignified Lincoln's statue looks and wonder if I could ever help people like he did. This starts me thinking again about whether I should run for class president. So he's kind of just really thinking about it deep in his own thought. Suddenly, right out of the blue, I hear this voice. Okay, so we see here another idiom. So he was deep in his own thought and then suddenly he hears a voice. So right out of the blue means it's suddenly, it's like, and it's kind of unexpected. It's kind of surprising that it happened. Like, whoa, maybe it startled him and maybe he jumped a little bit. Like when someone taps you on the shoulder and you didn't realize they're there. Excuse me, right? Woo. Excuse me, young man. You're thinking of running for president? I look up and realize that Lincoln's statue is talking to me. It's so overwhelming that I stand there speechless for a minute. Finally, I stammer, P -p President Lincoln? Maybe you should first run for mayor of your town, the statue says, or perhaps for governor. Once you get the hang of being in public office, you could run for president. So we've got another idiom here, get the hang of. So this get the hang of, we can see he tells him maybe he should run for mayor or governor. And then once he gets the hang of public office, he could run for president. So to get the hang of means you've done it before. You have some experience. You know how to do it. So he wants him to know how to, to be in public office, uh, like the governor or the mayor, before he tries to run for president. Actually, it's for president of my fourth grade class, I say. The giant's. Statue nods. That's an excellent start. I figure while I have Lincoln's ear, I should get some advice. So another idiom has popped up here. Have Lincoln's ear. You can use anyone's name in this. For this story, of course, it's Lincoln's ear, but you could say I have Mrs. Hagen's ear. I have Miss Burtnett's ear. I have Miss Miller's ear. To have someone's ear, you can see he says, I get some advice. It means that they're listening to you. They're paying attention to you. They hear what you're saying. And so he's going to use that opportunity while he's listening to him and he has his attention to get some advice from him. I have a problem. I hate writing and giving speeches. And my opponent, Tommy, is great at both things. What kind of campaign would you run? Lincoln asks. I have lots of ideas for our school, I tell him. For instance, I want our school to use fruits and vegetables from the local farmer's market in the cafeteria. I also want to start a book drive for our school library. There's your speech, he says. Tell people your ideas with honesty, integrity, and enthusiasm. And you can't possibly go wrong. Thanks, Mr. President, I say. I think I can do that. Grandpa, I can't wait to see you on Saturday because I have to tell you about our visit to the Natural History Museum. Your grandson and future class president, Miguel. P.S. I would advise not wearing the Time Specs 3000 while looking at dinosaur bones, which is something you can see in the Natural History Museum. So you can see that this is just a small little amount of what he experienced. He has a ton more to tell his grandpa when he visits. So down below, you're going to be answering these make connections questions. Talk about why Miguel decides to run for class president. Why does he do that? Why does he want to run? Number two, what would you do for your school if you were class president? Now, you can't tell me, I don't want to be class president. You have to say, if I was class president, I would, blah, 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 blah. You have to pretend like you're running for class president and think of something good that you would do for your school.
The other thing that you're going to need to do is a chart. And this week we are doing a point of view chart. Remember, when you have point of view, you have first or third person, and it's going to tell the thoughts or feelings of a character or a narrator or sometimes your author. You're going to want to be really careful to listen to your lessons to make sure you know how to fill out this point of view chart this week. Make sure you use three details from your text to support your point of view. Remember, as always, your teachers are here for you. You can email us or talk to us to get information if you're stuck. Good luck. Do your best.